ever looked at father's health bar and thought, yep, this is going to take a while. And then watched someone delete a huge chunk of it before the fight really starts. This is the difference between starting a fight as usual and starting it with Valheim's damage mechanics working in your favor. One fight is just walking up and swinging, the other stacks sneak multipliers, meets boss powers and weapon swaps correctly. And here's the catch. If you don't understand how damage works in this game, fights feel harder than they should and you hit like a wet noodle. So today I'll show you how Valheim's damage actually works with mechanics you can use immediately, so your hits finally make sense. Let's start with the one idea that fixes 90% of the confusion. The damage pipeline. Every time you hit something in Valheim, the game runs that hit through a short checklist. Once you understand the order, the numbers stop feeling random. Think of it as four steps. First, your real weapon damage based on your skill with that weapon type. Second, your damage type versus the enemy's resistances or weaknesses. Third, multipliers, backstab, stagger, special attacks, stuff like that. And fourth, a multi-target penalty if your swing hits more than one thing. That's it. That's where every damage number comes from. Now let's walk through these steps one by one and translate them into something you can rely on in combat. Step 1. Skill and real weapon damage. Your weapon is lying to you. That big orange number is the maximum base damage, what the weapon could do at skill level 100. The numbers that actually matter are the yellow values in brackets. At low skill you are getting a fraction of the max value. At high skill you are getting closer to the full number. This is why a late game weapon can feel pathetic on a character with low skill for that type. And why training a weapon type matters so much more than you might think. Step 2. Damage type versus resistances. Next up is the right tool wrong target step. Valheim splits damage into a few types. For us the important ones are physical, blunt slash and pierce, or elemental, fire, frost, poison, spirit or lightning. Every creature has its own opinion about each of these. From very weak, taking a lot more damage, to immune, taking no damage at all. Here's an example. If you hit them with blunt, they explode and go down so fast. But poke them with pierce and you get sad grey numbers and a very happy blob. For most playthroughs all you need is one blunt weapon, one pierce option, your bow works fine here and one slash weapon. And if you are min-maxing, add an AOE weapon like an Edgear or a sledge for crowd fight. By alternating between your choices, you will level up your skills in all physical damage types on the go. Grey means not a good choice. White is okay and if you see yellow numbers, you found the sweet spot. The TLDR here is, if you are getting small or grey numbers, swap damage types first. This fixes more problems than upgrading your weapon ever will. Step 3. The Honest Multipliers Once the game knows your real damage and your damage type, it starts stacking multipliers on top. The big ones are backstab, stagger bonus, special attack and combo multipliers. Let's break those down. Backstab, the sneaky spike. Hit an enemy while they are unaware and your backstab multiplier activates. It doesn't matter where you hit from, what matters is awareness. Once the red exclamation mark appears, backstabs are off the table. Daggers have the biggest bonus here, six times and they deal both slash and pierce damage. But every regular melee weapon in the game can backstab. Combine this with the right damage type and you get huge numbers for free. Stagger. Double damage during flailing time. If you stagger an enemy, either by parrying or by building enough stagger damage, they take double damage while flailing. This is your main damage window. Dump your strongest attacks here. I did a full breakdown on how this mechanic works. If you're interested, watch my Stagger Secrets video. Special and Finisher Multipliers – The Hidden Bonuses Some attacks have better multipliers than the base chain. This is where weapons differ more than you might think. 
Many weapons have a stronger heavy secondary attack. Some weapons have higher built-in multipliers that can make certain attacks far more effective. Daggers with backstab being the classic example. And several weapons have a third hit finisher that deals increased damage. But it is also slower, prevents you from doing anything else in that window like dodging or parrying and can therefore expose you if mistimed. Step 3-1. The cheesy multipliers. Now, a quick word about the secret weapon combos you may have seen online. These are timing-based techniques that squeeze extra attacks into a short window. They do increase damage, some of them an insane amount, but they take practice, precise timing and often cost more stamina and focus than they are worth in a normal solo playthrough, especially outside of a controlled test setup. I'll show you one example in section 5 so you can decide for yourself if it's worth learning. Step 4. Multi-target penalty. If your swing hits multiple enemies, Valheim reduces the damage dealt to each one, but increases the total damage of the attack. The numbers on each enemy are smaller, but you are spreading damage across multiple targets, so your overall damage output is higher. Also interesting and lesser known, rocks, trees and terrain count as additional targets. So if your swing clips the ground or obstacles, your damage on the enemies drops. But while testing this more closely, I noticed an important detail. Damage only seems to split if your weapon can actually damage what it hits. For example, axes clipping trees will split damage, while weapons like Edgears near rocks don't appear to reduce your damage in the same way. But it's hard to prove that perfectly because damage rolls vary so much. In practice, clean positioning makes a noticeable difference. So when you're fighting, try to line up your swings so you're hitting enemies, not the environment around them. Section 2. The math behind Valheim's combat. And here's Valheim's actual damage formula. This is just to show you that the system really is consistent under the hood. You could calculate everything if you really wanted to. But that's not what this video is about. What I care about is that you understand the rules well enough to make good decisions that actually help you in real fights. And here are a few practical ways to do exactly that. Section 3. Turning the math into gameplay decisions. Now that you know how damage is calculated, let's turn the math into choices that help you kill tougher enemies faster without better gear. You don't need to play perfectly, just let the system support you. Rule number one, stamina is damage. If you're out of stamina, your damage pipeline doesn't matter. You simply can't attack. But honestly, even I sometimes panic, start meshing attacks and forget everything I just told you. Here are some tips to preserve your stamina. Don't sprint into fights. Keep a stamina buffer, especially before parrying. Eat balanced food and use stamina and tasty meats. Also, remember, heavy armor drains more stamina when you dodge, parry or run. And late game options like the Esquin Cave help to preserve it. Rule 2. Let the numbers tell you when to switch. If you see great damage numbers, the game is telling you something is wrong. If an enemy consistently feels tanky, that's when checking the wiki for resistances actually helps. You're not cheating by looking things up, you're learning the rules of the 10th world. Rule 3. Save multiplayers for enemies that deserve them. Trash mobs don't need backstabs, stagger setups or perfect play. Save your effort for fights that matter. Bosses start enemies and things that can actually kill you. Rule 4. Heavy attacks belong inside stagger windows. This one alone will fix more DPS problems than upgrading your weapon. If your weapon has a strong secondary or special attack, use it during stagger windows. Section 4. Damage tech for overachievers. Everything up to this point is what I'd call normal Valheim damage. And honestly, it's more than enough to finish the game comfortably. But if you enjoy pushing numbers a bit further, you can combine parts of the damage pipeline into a small, repeatable damage pattern. A typical high damage setup looks like this. Open with a backstab on an unaware enemy using the right damage type. Follow up with a parry into a heavy or combo finisher to hit inside the stagger window. And maybe you want to try and squeeze in one of the secret weapon combos. So here's the promised example you can try for yourself. Start attacking while holding the block button and keep holding it throughout the combo. 
perform your first attack and as soon as your character returns the block stance, press and hold the attack button to add an extra 4th hit to a normal 3 hit chain. This does increase damage per second and yes, it works. But in my experience, even the simpler versions are hard to pull off reliably in normal gameplay. If you want to go deeper and push the absolute maximum damage, I recommend Pendragon's original breakdown about the weapon combos, which I link in the pinned comment. It's the reference most people build on. Is any of this required? No. Is it fun when you pull it off and the health bar just melts? Absolutely. But if you lose fights because you try to pull a fancy combo, going back to solid fundamentals will usually give you a better result overall. And speaking of fundamentals, there's one more thing worth knowing. Some enemies have weak spots or are extremely vulnerable to certain damage types. Trolls at the head, Seeker soldiers at the back or abdomen, Gyal at the XX underneath, Stone golems hate pickaxes and bears really don't like fire. Weak spots are strong alone, but they really shine when you understand stagger timing. I have a whole video about stagger and one more about armor if you want to dive deeper into damage mechanics after this. And even though there are still more weird corners to Valheim's combat math I didn't cover here, if you understand the damage pipeline, you already know more than most Vikings running around in the meadows. So let's revisit the Fader example one last time. We stacked Yaglu's power for extra damage, opened with a sneak attack using a heavy hitter, popped a berserker meat, and then swapped to faster weapons to take advantage of that short damage window before we have to start moving. Doing all of this let us squeeze out significantly more DPS in the first seconds of the fight. That's Valheim's damage mechanics working for you instead of against you. And if you made it to the end, let me know what surprised you the most. And now grab your weapon of choice, pick a biome and go make some yellow numbers happen. Skull!